All right, good evening, everyone. We are out on another walk, and literally right at the start, right next to our car, we've come across this really large male bamboo pit viper. And we're kind of on the back end of a typhoon, so it's a little bit rainy and blustery. I'm not gonna be able to film him that long, but really cool find at the start. We've seen lots of these on the vlog, so I'll link a few videos here where you can see some more and get some more detailed information. And we're gonna to get to the trails and hopefully find a few more things to film. All right, folks, we're on to snake number two. And this is a, another green snake in a tree, but you'll see here, it is not a bamboo. As you can tell by me using my hand, um, this is instead a harmless greater green snake trying to find a place out of the rain for the evening and just stretched out along this branch here. Really great specimen, uh, very standard behavior for them roosting like this. I'm a little bit surprised we've got one roosting so quickly after a blustery storm. We were just talking in our little group here about that, so this is a pretty cool find. And actually, one of our guests tonight made the spot. I walked right by this one. So very, very cool find. You can see here it's uh, definitely in evening mode, not moving around too quick, but enjoying its spot on this dry branch. So I think we're gonna maybe uh, take a look at this for a minute, get some still shots, and then leave it alone and get on our way. But very cool spot. And again, we're still uh, pretty early in the walk. Nice to see two snakes already. Fingers crossed, maybe a decent night. Alright, we've got our next snake not too far down the road, this juvenile bamboo pit viper. You can see here it's set up, ready to hunt for the night. We're not going to mess with this one much at all because it's small, it's late in the year, and I want to make sure that it has a great chance to get a meal. But again, I'll link some more videos here where you can find more details about bamboo vipers if you're interested. And we're going to keep on moving. The snakes seem to be out tonight, so Hopefully we'll get a few more before the end of our walk. All right, everyone, not a snake, but a pretty fantastic find here. This is a moon moth or Chinese luna moth. And I found a number of these around Hong Kong before, but it's just one of those animals that I never seem to have my camera with me when I find them. So really, really happy that I'm able to get a few good shots here and um, do some video as well because they're such a such a beautiful moth and this one looks like it's just recently come out of chrysalis I mean it's um, its tails there are still unfurling a bit it's not flying away at all even though I'm quite close so I imagine it's uh, not quite dried out and ready to fly yet but really phenomenal species um, I'm gonna see if I can get around the other side here and show you what the underside looks like because we don't often get to see that on this species. But you can see here a very heavy bodied moth, um, quite large and robust and super cool. Let me just get over here one more time and get my hand up so you can have a size reference. Sorry for the shaky video. But yeah, there's my hand level with it. So. Not as big as the Atlas moths, but a, a pretty substantial moth nonetheless. So cool find. Again, we're, we're still kind of at the beginning here, so um, maybe, maybe getting a little farther on, but there's still a lot of walking to do, so hopefully there's a lot more cool stuff like this out there. And we will pop back on when we find the next interesting animal. All right, folks, next snake of the night. Um, you might be able to hear, but we're by a stream, and it's no coincidence then that we have found an Anderson stream snake. Uh, one of the most common stream snakes here in Hong Kong. Let's see if we can get a view of his head. There we go. Um, and yeah, something we've also seen on the vlog quite a bit. 
a bit tricky to film him one-handed here, so I don't want to spend too much time on them. But nice little stream snakes. This is about as big as they get. And yeah, they love these clear mountain water streams. So I'm going to go ahead and let him go here. And you can watch him swim away. If we get the light bright enough. And we're going to move on and go try and find something else. There he goes. All right, folks. We have another snake out on a new walk. And this is an oldie but a goodie. Ooh, there he goes. Some of you might recognize the species, but this is a redneck keelback. And this one's on the move, so we're probably only gonna get a minute or so with it, but it's got an embankment it needs to climb here. And yeah, one of Hong Kong's most common snake species. And it is one of the world's only venomous and poisonous species. We've talked about this before on the vlog, but they can secrete poison out of the backs of their necks. And we're just going to let this one move on its way here. So it won't include too much more detail, but pretty cool find. Uh, we're going to keep walking, see if we can come up with something else. And we'll check back in if we do. All right, folks, we've got our next snake of the day. And I doubt this one's going to stick around too long, but this is an Indo-Chinese rat snake. A really big one and a really fast one. And we just helped him out of a tricky situation. And I assume the second he realizes that there's only forest behind him, he's going to take off. But this is a snake we see uh, somewhat regularly on the vlog. Um, they're pretty common in certain areas, certainly in the spot we're in today. And they're a medium-sized snake, really long bodies, long thin tails, uh, like most rat snakes. They're quite different from the common rat snake here in that they don't have any body banding whatsoever. They have some very faint lateral striping and they have really beautiful yellow ventrals. Um, and yeah, very common uh, rat snake-like features. Big eyes, uh, small narrow heads, uh, really, really fast when they take off. And they'll predate on lots of different types of animals. They love small mammals, but they'll take lizards and things like that as well. So if I back out a little bit, you may be able to see how long he is. It's tough to do it without scale, I realize, but um, I would say if it still had the tip of its tail, which you can see here, it actually doesn't. Uh, but if it had the tip of its tail, I would say it was about five feet long, maybe a meter and a half, give or take. But yeah, really great snakes, really cool. Actually, that this one's sat here defensive as long as it has. It's given us a chance to get some good video, but now it's going to make its way out. And I think it's probably going to take off pretty quick once it realizes that it's got some room to run, but see if we can follow it until it realizes that. Still got some pretty strong defensive behavior going. but they take off really fast once they can feel that they've got some traction in the bush, so. Yeah, interesting. This one's very wary of us. Even though we helped you out, didn't we, buddy? And off he goes. Really cool, I didn't think we were gonna get that much video. Really happy that we were able to do so. All right, well, we're off again, and we will check back in if we find something else. All right, everyone, we have our next snake on this early morning walk, and this is a doozy. Here we have a McClellan's coral snake. And for those of you who've been watching since the beginning of these vlogs, you may remember the last snake we found on the very first herping vlog was a McClellan's coral snake. Uh, that one was quite a bit bigger than this one. This one is relatively small. I would say this is a sub-adult, but still just as striking as the mature specimen. And uh, they also don't have much variability between juveniles and mature individuals. 
here you can see here maybe uh, when we look a little bit closer there's some orange highlights around the black bands but that's about the only major difference those tend to fade away a little bit more as they get bigger and you can see here he's curled up in very typical defensive posture um, he's got his tail sticking out a little bit you can see some of the piano key ventrals underneath and the ventrals look like that from the tail all the way up to the head on the underside of these snakes and they have a number of defensive uh, behaviors they often tuck their heads under their bodies similar to the way you'd see uh, the crates here in Hong Kong do and they also hang that tail out as I just mentioned as a decoy a lot of times they'll curl it out sometimes they even flip it over hold it sideways so you can see the ventrals really clearly um, and over here it looks like we might have the head sticking out and yeah we do but that is the tiny little panda looking head with the uh, black and white markings really really cool I wonder if he's uh, thinking about making a move maybe I can give you an overhead here oh you can see the head tucked back into the body a little bit but yeah very very cool find not a not a super common find here in Hong Kong these are fossorial snakes sub fossorial at least and uh, not too common to find them. This is actually my first this year. Last year I found a number of them, but uh, not so much this year. Get a few looks at them here. Really cool snake. So I think we're going to get some still shots. Um, and then as we watch it move on its way when it decides to make a move, we'll go ahead and uh, maybe film that. So take a quick break here and then we'll pop back on as it's making its way out. All right, just wanted to pop back on real quick. Uh, the head is actually popped out here and I wanted to give you guys a cool overhead shot so that you could see the head a little bit more clearly. Now I don't have a macro lens on as I'm filming so I can't get much closer because he's kind of a small snake, but there it is. And there he is making a move. It's, uh, there's a little bit of room here where you can just kind of get under this foliage, but nowhere it looks like he can get out. He's going to have to make a longer, longer move to get out, so we'll make sure that we film that after we get some stills. We'll just follow him around while he's moving on this ledge here, wait for some good shots, and then uh, video him as he finds his way out. Very cool. You see the tail there really clearly too. It looks like it may have sustained an injury or has some kind of birth defect right towards the tip there where it's a little bit pinched and dark. Really cool how they just find their way under the leaf litter like that. All right, well, let's see what he does and uh, we'll pop back on, like I said, when he's making his move out. All right, so our McClellan's has found a path for itself and it's making its way off into the bush. It's just gotta get up this ledge and then I'm sure it'll find somewhere it can crawl up under the leaf litter for the night, but we're super happy that we were able to bring this to you guys today, especially almost a year to the day from our first vlog last year where this species was featured at the very end. So lots of fun, really cool snake. I think this will probably close us off for the week as well. So check back in with us next week where I'm sure we'll have a lot more interesting stuff to share.